How do you do? How often do we hear discouraged people say, it isn't worth it? Things have gone wrong and no one seems to care. The woman in this story felt that way. She searched for meaning in the world's pleasures and found only bitter disappointment. She would try anything once, so she tried the one thing that proved worthy, and her heart and mind and life were unshackled. Well, that bar didn't live up to its reputation. <laughs> what a boring place! What are we waiting for? On to the next one! I heard that. Let's, Let's get the show on the road! I'm glad you came back to Wisconsin, Sandy. Yeah. Arizona's all right, but all my friends are here. We missed you, the original party girl. <laughs> Remember how my uncle got us kegs of beer so we could have parties at his house? That was so much fun. And remember how we used to get drunk and drive the 16th bridge at breakneck speed? Yeah, trying to get the car off the ground, and then we'd slam on the brakes and do a donut before we hit the fence and the hill. We were crazy! Look out! <laughs> Sharing the good news through true life stories of real people, this is Unshackled, dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. In many cities, homeless people stretch out on the ground or on a park bench or under a bridge for protection. But in Chicago, they can come to Pacific Garden Mission where the doors are open 24 seven, welcoming those who have nowhere to go. Thanks to friends who care and send financial gifts, the mission offers fresh clothing and showers, nutritious meals, and a safe place to sleep to hundreds of men, women, and children each day, all without charge. Pastors and counselors share the good news that can change their lives, introducing each person to the one whose hand is stretched out still. Those who take his hand find new life, and that's what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3,808 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. Where did that car come from? I didn't see it when I pulled out. Oh, is everyone all right? I can't move. I can move, but blood is running down my face. I'm scared. I can't move. It hurts. I'll squeeze out and get some help. Don't worry. God, if you help Brenda be all right, I'll live for you. The woman in our story was just 19 when she made a rash vow in the heat of desperation. This story tells why it was unlikely she would follow through. The true testimony of Sandy Crawler, right now on Unshackled. Growing up with three older brothers who were mean to me and parents who never showed love, I felt worthless. My older sister was the only one who seemed to care, but she was married with two children. I was closest to my younger brother. I went to parochial school for nine years and I hated it. I was scared to death of my dad and had very little love for him. He owned a gas station and farm implement company in rural Wisconsin. What are you doing back there, Sandy? Trying to get yourself killed? If that car hadn't a honked, I'd have run right over you. Get out of the way, you good for nothing kid. My brothers and sister had their share of rough treatment, too. Dad beat my brothers with a fan belt and chained one of them to a post in the basement one night for running around town late at night. Mom was the same way, always yelling at me, saying I was no good. She gave me a list of things to do each day before I could go out and play. Clean the kitchen daily, scrub cabinets, floors, refrigerator, and sweep the basement and iron clothes, etc. Though I tried, I couldn't seem to do anything right or do enough to please her. Why 
fire, you burning that bologna. I like it that way. You are so stupid, you can't even cook. Have you finished cleaning out the fridge? I will, as soon as I eat my sandwich. Sweep the basement, too. Why me? Because I said so. You good-for-nothing kid. Why can't you be more like Brenda? Uh, if it was up to me, I'd have aborted all of you. My parents never kissed me goodnight, which hurt my feelings. I cried myself to sleep a lot of nights. I knew I was bad, but I didn't understand why. Desperate for love, I was a troublemaker at school to get attention, climbing out the window, running on the roof, playing jokes, etc. But I was always talking to God, trying to understand my awful home and life. One day at recess, I went into the church and knelt at the altar and looked at Jesus hanging on the cross. God, why did you do that to your son? I try to do what the church tells me, so why did you do that to your son? I'll be good. <laughs> no answer. Although I was anything but good, I decided God was mean. Already I was stealing money, smoking and drinking, and I would go into my uncle's garage and take his motorbike to the woods, where my friends and I would ride around on the trails. Then I returned the bike so my uncle wouldn't discover I took it. I was always thinking of wild ways to get attention and have fun, but even my older brothers seemed to hate me. One night they had a party when our folks were gone. What are you doing here? Nothing. Nobody invited you. Get out of here, you runt. I'm not doing anything. You heard me. Get out of here or I'll beat you with my belt. Can't I just... Grab her. <laughs> no. Come here. You better hope I don't catch you. Stop. Don't. Oh. I ran away from home several times between the ages of 10 and 15, but couldn't find anywhere to live. Finally, I attended public high school, where I forgot about God, and I jumped into overdrive party mode. Trying to forget my heartache, I made friends by throwing parties and going bar hopping. Soon, I was drinking more and more booze, smoking, and tried speed and pot. Great party, Sandy. <laughs> Thanks to my uncle. He let us use his house and provided us the keg of beer. Wish my uncle owned a bar. Yeah, he's a great guy. Too bad he doesn't grow pot, too. Nah, he's old school, doesn't do drugs. I couldn't function without getting high. Yeah, I know. Gives you a whole new outlook. That guy with the cowboy hat on brought some speed. Wanna try it? I prefer wine, but I'll try anything once. Nothing filled the loneliness inside. In fact, my friend at that party ended up committing suicide years later. Wanting to die myself, I swallowed a bunch of pills from my uncle's medicine cabinet, hoping someone would notice and help me, but no one did. Instead of dying, I just got real sick and went home. No one cared. It seemed that my parents never spoke to me except to give me orders or to say, you're good for nothing. Halloween came, and I arranged a big party in the woods. Bonfire, booze, band, empty old cabin and all. Great party, Sandy. Yeah. The old spooky cabin is a nice touch, isn't it? Yeah, it scares the girls. I like scaring the girls. Doesn't scare me. You're just not stoned enough. Have a hit of this stuff, and we can go exploring. No thanks, I'm doing all right. Come on, this is a night to be wild and crazy. Police! Run! Oh, because most of us were underage, we hid in the woods till the police left. Then we continued to party. But some of the drug users scared me, so I backed off some from drugs. I felt so empty inside. I had always worked at home and also for others, earning money. I babysat, did yard work for neighbors, worked third shift at a factory. Nothing relieved the sadness in my heart. One day, my older sister had an idea. You drink coffee? I'll try anything once. I hear what you're saying, Sandy. 
But Mom and Dad have always been mean to us kids. They've never cared about me. Would you like to move in with us? Sure. We'll make you a room in the basement. Okay. You can give me a hand around here. Watch the kids, help with the cooking and cleaning. Gladly. You know I've always been a hard worker. I'll pay my own way. I'll see what Mom says. Are you kidding? She'll throw a party when I go. I lived with my sister and brother-in-law while I finished high school, helping her take care of the house and kids. I worked at a small factory, third shift, but kept drinking and smoking. Then I met a divorced man who wanted to go to Arizona. Willing to try anything once, I went with him. But even there I was troubled. He flirted with other girls at parties. So one night I went home and cut my wrists. Not enough to die. I just wanted to die. Then I started using cocaine along with the booze. Then, homesick and miserable, I returned to Wisconsin and my sister's house. Well, what's that you're reading, Sandy? One of those self-help books. Is it helping? No. Doesn't make sense to me. That kind of book mostly helps the author. Life doesn't make sense to me. I mean, all that stuff we learned at Mass. What's the point? I agree with you. Just do the best you can. And then what? You're looking for the big picture? Yes. Can't help you there. You're on your own. I hate myself sometimes. You've been kind of down since you came back from Arizona. Life isn't what I thought it would be. Welcome to the club. Why don't you talk to a psychiatrist? I'll try anything once. Cousin Vicky said she went to one. I'll see if she can recommend someone. We finally tracked down our cousin who told me that the psychiatrist hadn't helped her. But she knew someone who could help me. I was willing to try anything once and made an appointment with the guy. What happened seemed worthless at the time, but in fact was life-changing. We'll hear more about that appointment in just a moment. Unshackled is spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we are able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there is one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check to Unshackled and mail it to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Because I had felt so unloved for so long, I had been reading pop culture self-help books about loving yourself. They didn't help. So I made an appointment to talk with the man my cousin recommended. If he didn't help, I would end my life for sure. I drove to his place and talked about my family. Sandy, you're in college? Yes. What classes are you taking? Computer science and programming, business, English, and art. Well, let's say you built a robot and it fell in a ditch. What would you do? I'd get him out. Well, that's what Jesus did for you. What do you mean, Pastor? You're in a ditch, and he wants to pull you out. Remember, he created you. You're not a robot because he gave you free will, but we were designed to be in a relationship with God. And he gave us a book on how to live, the Bible. And when we don't live according to the way we're designed, we fall into sin and get stuck in a ditch. We always went to church, and I tried being good, but it didn't help. God knows that. But you're trying to live without him, without the power of his Holy Spirit. Jesus said, you must be born again, because we all sin, and our sin separates us from God. Then nobody's good. The Bible says, there is none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus said, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You have to believe in Jesus. Repent of your sins and ask him to save you. Because Jesus died for your sins, shed his blood to wash your sins away, and rose from the dead the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So going to church isn't enough? Going to church helps you learn about God and his purpose. But you have to be saved, and then transformation will take place. I didn't know that. Would you like to pray? Repent of your sins, and ask Jesus to save you from hell and take you to heaven when you die. I prayed with him and then drove home, thinking nothing had happened. But three days later, I was standing in the sunlight, ironing my sister's clothes, when I felt as if the light was going right through me. I felt transparent and clean. Nevertheless, I went bar hopping with my friends, and that's when we had an accident, and I cried out to God to save Brenda. Her hip was broken, but she survived. Now, I had to keep my promise I made to God. You're not drinking much, Sandy. I'm trying to cut back. Why? Because I promised God I would if he would make Brenda be okay. That's a good reason to celebrate, <laughs> not cut back. We have to keep our vows to God. Says who? We should always keep our word. For how long? You need to be saved. Don't drag me into your deal with God. But I'm seeing that everybody needs Jesus. Oh, come on. Don't be a spoil sport, Sandy. That isn't like you. I knew I had to get away from my friends and temptations, so I moved to Florida with mom and dad, who went there in the winter. And I took a job at a Greek restaurant until I was fired. Then I moved to Colorado to live with a friend whose roommate got me a job in construction. While I was there, I tried to quit smoking and drinking and went to several churches but my attempt to follow the Lord wasn't working. Hello? Sandy? Hey, cuz. What a nice surprise. <laughs> I'm in Pensacola, Sandy, going to Bible school. You should come here, too. Funny you should call now. Why? I just got fired from my job. I called the owner and asked for a raise, and my boss was so mad he fired me. Well, I guess it is the Lord's timing. I thought the Lord cared about me. He does, but his ways are not our ways. Now you're free to come to Bible school. Can I afford it? <laughs> you can't afford not to. Come on, learn the Bible. I moved to Pensacola and started Bible school. I had been there a year when I realized I was no longer smoking, drinking, or doing drugs and didn't even miss it. I was so busy, I just forgot about cigarettes, drugs, and booze. One of my joys was going out on the street to tell people about Jesus with the street preaching students. Among them was a good-looking man named Jack. Oh, this is Who among a... you wants to go to heaven? Think he's this about. Oh. Nobody wants to go to hell. And there is a hell. The Bible says so and Jesus said so. Hell is a place of torment. Think he's telling the truth? About heaven, Jesus said, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. The Son of God came to earth to die for our sins and shed his blood to wash our sins away because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ is death burial, and resurrection made it possible for you to go to heaven when you die. God loves you and wants to save you. You can receive God's sacrifice for your sins, or you can pay the penalty yourself. The choice is yours. I needed a ride home that night, so Jack drove me and we became friends. 
I went with him street preaching every Saturday evening, and we began hanging out more often. Did you pray when you were growing up, Sandy? Ritual prayers. But whenever I prayed all those years, I never felt that God heard me. Hmm. We have to be connected to God through Jesus Christ. The difference is amazing. Now I know that God hears my prayers. It's interesting, isn't it, Sandy? The people the Lord brings each week when we're out preaching. Yes. I learn as much about myself as I learn about them. What do you mean? At first, when people were too ugly to even take a tract, I was angry with them. God told me, it's my job to offer them a tract, and it is up to them if they want it. And for me not to get discouraged if they refuse a tract. Praying for the lost is one of the best things we can do. I don't understand why people hate Jesus so much. Jesus died for our sin. Facing him forces people to face their sin, and nobody wants to face their sin. As soon as you recognize who he is and what he did for you, you either have to repent of your sin or turn away. It's easier to turn away. Jack and I continued the street ministry together for two years in Bible school. We married, graduated in 1985, and left for Colorado to start a church. Jack preached at rescue missions in Denver, and I wrote letters home, urging my family and friends to receive Jesus Christ as their savior. After a few years, we moved to Minnesota to pastor a church for a while. From there, we moved to Maryland to help Jack's best friend pastor a church. Six years later, my dad died, so we moved back to Wisconsin to help my mom, where I often shared the gospel with my family and friends. What makes you think you have the right to preach to me? I'm just telling you that God loved you so much that he sent Jesus to die in your place. If I want to hear preaching, I'll go to church. You won't hear the gospel there. I never did. Shut up. Let me show you from the Bible what Jesus said in John chapter 11. Something I never heard until I was saved. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? I'll tell you what I believe. I believe you think you're better than we are. Well, you're not. You hear? Give me that Bible. Don't you ever preach to me again, or I'll beat you. He ripped your Bible? Yeah. Hard to believe, isn't it? No, it's not hard to believe. I'm just trying to keep them from going to hell. God made going to heaven so easy for us. Horrible for Jesus, but easy for us. People like to be self-sufficient. But look how it works out in real life. And even if some people succeed, when they die, then what? They die. Psalm 73 talks about the ungodly, how they prosper. And the psalmist questions God about that until he walks into the sanctuary of God and understands. He says, How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. People don't want to hear that, Sandy. Wouldn't you want to know if your house was on fire so you could get out? Oh, that's different. Just keep your mouth shut and let them go to hell if that's what they want. I can't do that! Hell is forever! Then be prepared for rejection. My brother Roger was born again 30 years later, died at 59, and is now in heaven with Jesus. My relationship with the rest of my family isn't good because I can't help but talk about Jesus. But I'm not discouraged that my family rejects the gospel. The verse that helped me get through all these years is Psalm 2710. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. I also began writing letters to the editor, a way for me to witness to others in the community. Jack and I worked at secular jobs, but we continued to do street ministry, which we've been doing for over 40 years now. There is no greater joy than seeing others come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be set free. I love to pass out tracts and tell people about Jesus and street preach all over the country. You may see us on the streets of Chicago. I trust in God's word that says in Galatians chapter 6, And let us not be weary in well-doing, 
for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In John chapter 10, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Are you living the abundant life, listening friend? Not abundant in material things that will pass away, but abundant in God's peace and joy. Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you abound in hope? Hope that can only be found in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? If you haven't trusted him as your Lord and Savior, why not do so now? If you need help in making this life-changing decision, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM or you can get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. Did you know Unshackled is now offering new programming? That's right. We wanted to create even more quality Christian content for you, our listener. So we're now producing an exciting new children's show called The Clue Crew. This is a family-friendly adventure series where there's always a biblical lesson to be learned and a mystery to be solved. We're also bringing to life powerful gospel truths in a new series called History's Greatest Sermons. This program will feature the very words of Billy Sunday, Charles Spurgeon, Dwight L. Moody, and many more, all dramatized and delivered by our very own unshackled actors. And then there's our daily devotionals. In these three-minute episodes, we hear a true story of transformation with supporting scripture and an application point to help us dive deeper in our biblical understanding. If you'd like to hear any of these new programs in your area, we encourage you to reach out to your station manager and ask them if they can bring you The Clue Crew, History's Greatest Sermons, and Unshackled's Daily Devotionals. This is program number 3808. Heard in the true story of Sandy Crawler were Mara Kate Burns, Cheryl Lynn Galemo, Brad Armacost, Tricia Grennan, Evan Armacost, and Patrick Thompson. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Patrick Thompson. Sound assistant, Jacob Wilcoxon. Audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Kenitha Gabler. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today or reach out to us on social media. Connecting with you means a great deal to us. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Unshackled PGM. And our address? Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you.